Okay, now I'm back. I'm so sorry. Something, you know, the enemy just does not want us to have this um, Zoom, but it's okay. I'm back. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just plead your blood over the connection. We plead your blood over the Zoom. Pastor Tuto, go ahead and bless us. Amen. 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 So as I was sharing, yes. Um, as I've been preparing and meditating over this word, um, one thing that really stands out is that we can sum up the gospel of, of Jesus and the Ten Commandments into two points, really, which is a pure heart and love. A pure heart and love. And I want to I I take us to the Sermon on the Mount. You know, this was one of Jesus' early preachings. He went up to the mountain and he was surrounded by a multitude of people, right? And the word says, you know, in Matthew chapter 6, 27, 28, you know, when, when talking about adultery, he said, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery within his heart. And Jesus here is essentially saying, have a pure heart. And Matthew, uh, later on, he says, you have heard that it was said, love your enemies. You love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children with your father in heaven and that here jesus is saying he basically saying have a pure heart don't let hate contaminate you don't let hate corrupt your heart have a pure heart amen he goes on to say watch out don't do deeds publicly to be admired you know for you will lose the reward of your father in heaven when you give when you give out to the need don't be like the hypocrites who blow trumpets no 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 instead when you give to someone in need, do so so that your left hand doesn't know what your right hand has done. Give your gifts in private, amen? And your father who sees everything will reward you. Jesus is teaching us to have a pure heart in each and every single thing that we do. Because when we have a pure heart, we have pure intentions, amen? You know, some people, they, they, they can give or they can do a good deed, but at the back of their mind, it's like, yes, you know, this is, you know, this, I'm keeping this as a stash. One day I'm going to use this. But no, no, no. Jesus is saying when you do something, it's not about getting credit before men. No, 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 no. It is about him. He comes for, like, it's about honoring him. Amen. Having a pure heart, pure intentions. He kept on going and he says, he talked about fasting. He says, do not be like those who, who fast in public so that everyone can see, or those who pray in public so that everyone can see them. And then, and then they look at them as like, wow, such incredible people. But no, when you fast, fast in secret. When you pray, pray privately. Amen. And here's the thing is that it's when you, the word says that we, doing this, he's saying that it's about the heart. You can do the right thing. But if you're doing the right thing from the wrong place, then you're doing it in vain. Amen. If we are praying, praying is incredible. But if we're praying from a place of, of, of or doing things from a place of self-righteousness, from, from a place of pride, the Lord sees that. The Lord knows our hearts. Psalms 139 verses 1 to 4, it says, Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and you know everything about me. You know when I sit down or when I stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You know what I am going to say even before I say it. We cannot fool the Lord. Amen. We cannot fool the Lord. And this actually is the same when it comes to sexual purity. It's possible to remain sexually pure in the physical, right? But have a contaminated heart if you are doing it from a place of pride, if you're doing it from a place of self-righteousness, and perhaps even thinking, oh, you know what, because of this, I'm, I'm better than every, anyone else who, who hasn't done so. No, 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 that is not the case at all. So the foundation I would like to share is that, first and foremost, purity is a matter of the heart, you know? But today I would like to specifically focus on, on sexual purity. And I would like to unpack it further, you know? And this is, you know, uh, I'd like to share on this subject, especially because of my personal journey and what the Lord has done in my life, you know? So to give you some context before going in, I would really just uh, like to share my testimony with you. Um, and 
for me in my in my journey you know i was exposed to pornography from a very young age i was exposed to pornography when i was 16 and i ended up having a, a porn addiction for another 11 years you know it's something i really battled with for a very very long time at my worst when i was when i was even depressed when i was sad i was i was even for a period of time i was even seeing prostitutes you know i was fine on the outside this was this was on the outside it appeared to it was fine to it was good however on the inside i was deeply broken and deeply hurting i felt helpless and stuck for many many years you know however 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 the turning point came in 2017 when i gave my life to christ you know and thank you i thank the lord so much we thank the lord for his grace and for the blood of jesus what god has done uh, in my life, and I just, I just honor the Lord. So, in two, when, so it, it made, you know, there's certain, once you endure certain things, then you, you get to appreciate the word even more. And one of my favorite scriptures, 2 Corinthians, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. All things are new. May that be a word of encouragement for someone that all things are new. The Lord, when, 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 when you, when we give ourselves to Christ, everything is reset. The blood of Jesus just, just covers us and wipes the state clean as white as snow. Amen. You know, so in 20, in 2019, um, uh, I was led, I felt led to then, you know, just I made a vow to the Lord to abstain uh, from, from sex until marriage. And by the God's grace, you know, going strong till this day. Amen. So that is just uh, something I would like to share with you. And one thing is that I love to, um, when I share that testimony, you know, the word says that we overcame by the blood of the lamb and the words of our family. That every time I share that, it's something that is so liberating and so empowering, even for me personally, just to, as a testimony to say like, this is what God has done for me. But at the same time, I know that when I share, there's someone who might be having guilt, going through guilt or shame or self-condemnation. Because especially when it comes in the church, when we deal with certain things of, 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 of sexual sin or, or sexual immorality, there's so much shame and usually a lot of judgment that is attached. However, when we, when we just can come and just share what, because and what God has done in our lives, it's something that can be so liberating and so empowering, amen? So I just wanted to share that testimony with you. And this is of, how, of my personal journey and why this is such a, a topic so near and dear to my heart. So yes, sexual purity is very, very important. So when we talk about sex, you see sex is more than a physical act. Sex is physical, emotional, and most importantly, sex is spiritual. You know, when the Bible tells us to wait for marriage before sex, it's not just trying to stop us from, from having a good time. No, no, no. It's much deeper than that. You see, purity, the purity is protection right? Flee, the word, the word says, flee from sexual immorality for every other sin that commit, uh, commits is outside of every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexual immoral person sins against his own body. There's certain things that when you have sex, these, the two, the word says the two become one. Amen? The two become one, and you'll find that sometimes you can be stuck in People can be stuck in maybe even toxic relationships or can be stuck in situations that they're even struggling to get out of because the two have become one, you know? And we, we, this is why the Lord, when, we, when the word says we must remain pure until marriage, it's because though God is so concerned about who we join ourselves and become one with. Purity is a way of protecting our hearts, amen? You know, and I want to give an example and, and I want to give an example of someone who, someone very, uh, the story of Solomon. I, I find the story of Solomon so fascinating because if you read First Kings chapter three, it will tell you that Solomon, that God appeared to Solomon in a dream. God appeared to Solomon in a dream and asked Solomon, Solomon, what do you want? Open, you know, open slate, open check. Like, what do you want? Solomon asked for wisdom. And the Lord was so impressed by Solomon, by what Solomon said. And this is what the Lord said. He said, Solomon, I will not only make you the wisest man who has ever lived, but I will make you the wisest man who will ever live. That's past 
present, future. There will never be another wiser than Solomon. When we read Proverbs, when we read the wisdom that is in there, that is from the hand of Solomon. God blessed Solomon with such incredible wisdom and wealth. Amen. And for me, this is, I find Solomon so fascinating. Here is someone who's the wisest person who ever lived. Here is someone who God appeared to Solomon twice in a dream. But let's fast forward to chapter 10. Now, if you look at uh, same uh, 1 Kings chapter 10, uh, it will tell you that Solomon, now he had, um, he, had a, he had a liking to foreign women. Now, 2 Kings chapter 10, thank you. He had a liking to foreign women. And because of that, and those women praised foreign gods. As you know, Sor Solomon ended up marrying 700 wives and having 300 concubines. And the word says that they made him worship the foreign gods. They made him turn away from God. So Solomon, who is this wise man who had had encounters with God in his dreams, he ended up because of being, in, being entangled, being in, a, in an entanglement or entanglements, plural, with people who were impure by who didn't follow Christ, he too became like them because the word says the two shall become one. So he became like them and he too started to worship and started to praise the foreign gods, the idols. And I feel that that word should be so humbling to us to be like, if, if that happened to Solomon, if he was able to backslide like that, then this is why it is so important for us to, to remain pure in each and every single thing that we do. Um, and, and in our thoughts and in, in our actions, in our deeds, but also especially to remain sexually pure. Amen. Um, what, again, one, of, one, one thing that I've come to appreciate is that one of the fruits of purity is discernment. One of the fruits of purity is discernment. Remember the anchor script, Matthew 5 verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. So when you have a pure heart, not only do you see God, but also I think even equally important, you, when you have a pure heart, not only do you see where God is, but also when you have a pure heart, you see where God isn't. Amen. And that is one of the fruits of purity. And now you look, I'll, I'll give you a very simple example, like music, right? They are, are, growing up, I used to have such a foul tongue. Um, and I used to listen to certain music. I used to listen to so much hip hop, so much. And it was so like, oh, wow. Um, there was so much cursing, so much profanity. And uh, growing up, I was so desensitized to it because it had consumed my mind. It had consumed my spirit. But then later on, when I go back to that music, I listen to it and I'm like, hey, what? what? Why, why, why is this person so angry? You know, why is it so sexual? Why is it so vulgar? It's because that's what happens, that purity makes you, you, get, you gain a spirit of discernment. And what is discernment? Discernment is the ability to judge well. It is the ability to perceive. Amen. That is one of the fruits of purity. And I gave music as a simple example, but at the same thing, same time, that can happen even in relationships with partners. The reason why the Lord wants us to be pure is that he wants us to gain this fruit of discernment that we will not be walking in the flesh. When, when you know, if to, to the gents, when you see a woman who is looking absolutely beautiful and curvy on the outside and you'll be like, wow, you will not just be, get carried away and judged by that, no. But you will not get carried away with the flesh. We will not move by the flesh, no. Even, and same thing to the ladies. You see a gentleman, you know, is fine, handsome, fine, bald head like mine. Be like, hey, that's not enough. But to, you have to be discerning. The spirit of discernment comes, again, help, purity is one of the fruits that gives us this discernment. Hallelujah. Um, and so that is so important for us to, to walk in purity. And... And this is not to demonize sex. No, not at all. Let's remember that God created sex, that God created sex for us to enjoy, that God, that sex in itself is a blessing from God. Amen. This is very important. And now, therefore, I would like us to share, I would like to share a passage of, of scripture with you. And this is from um, Songs of Solomon, chapter number seven. Songs of Solomon, chapter number seven. I'm going to read verse one to ten. Right. And this is a man. Right. And, you know, if uh, just to if you're not too familiar, just to recap on rather the, the book of Songs of Solomon, these are a series of poems of a man to a woman. But rather at the same time, they're also deeper than that is a, is a metaphor of God's love even for us. Amen. Right. So you have uh, Songs of Solomon, chapter number seven. It says, 
this is the man, perspective of the man. The word says, what a wonderful man, what a wonderful woman you are. How beautiful are your feet in sandals. The curve of your thighs is like a work of an artist. A bowl is there that never runs out of spiced wine. A sheaf of wheat is there surrounded by lilies. Your breasts are like twin deer, like two gazelles. Please, I'm, I'm reading from the word here. This is, this is the word of God, right? Your neck is like a tower of ivory. Your eyes are like the pools of the city of Hezbollah, near the gate of that great city. Your nose is as lovely as the tower of Lebanon, the stand guard, that stands guard of Damascus. Your head is held high like the mountain. Your braids, your braided hair shines like the finest satin. Its beauty could hold a captive. How pretty you are, how beautiful you are, how complete the delights of your love. You are graceful as a palm tree and your breasts are a cluster of dates. There was a, a lot of emphasis on breasts in this passage, but we move on. I, I, I climb the palm tree and I pick its fruit. To me, your breasts are like bunches of grapes, your breath like fr a fragrance of apples and your mouth like the finest wine. This is the man speaking. Now I want to share with you verse nine, and this is what the woman responds. It says, then, le then let wine flow straight to my lover, flowing over his lips in tea. And verse 10, this is her response. She says, I belong to my lover and he desires me. Another, an, another version says, I belong to my lover and he calls me as his own. And what I find so fascinating about this passage of scripture is that this is in this place, the man you can say is Christ. And woman is, and the woman is us as the, us as the church, as the bride. And as, as, as Christ's love for us, this endless and reckless love for us, which desires us, which is constantly pursuing us and wants us. At the same time, that response of, I belong to my lover and he desires me. Christ, not the Lord, John 3, 16, not the Jesus, the Lord, God sent his only begotten son out of love. It was the love for us so that whoever believes shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. You know, Ephesians 5, just to continue on that point, is Ephesians 5.23 says, for the husband is the head of his wife, and also Christ is the head of the church. Amen. So what was God's, you know, and when man, after the fall, when man sinned, you'll find that, you find that God's plan for redemption was Christ. And how we are redeemed, how we receive our salvation is us as the church, when we submit, when we open our hearts, and therefore allow Christ to enter into our hearts, then us, then it be, we, are, we, are, we are redeemed. It becomes complete. We become one with Christ again. Amen, right? In the same way, when a man, right? When a woman is with a man, first the woman now opens. And when she opens herself, the man then enters her. And then the two become one and the picture is complete. And now it becomes, it becomes full circle. What am I submitting to you today is that sex is sacred, that sex is an expression of worship. And this is why, this is why it's something so, why it is so important for us to remain sexually pure because in sex, especially in marriage, that's when it is pure. Hallelujah. You know, and as, as we walk, especially as young people on this journey, just to We've been in a, we know we're in a culture which is so desensitized to, to so much. Um, but that is what we, we should aspire to do, to have, to live a life. Remember that number one, purity begins with the heart. And to just surrender our, ourselves to the Lord and just to honor him in each and every single thing that we do. So as I close, and I'm just going to give you a couple of points. It's the question would be, how do we live lives of purity? Amen. How do we live lives of purity? And number one is intimacy with God. We need to be intimate with God. The word here says, you know, be intimate with our lover. Jesus, should, Jesus Christ should be our first lover for each and every single one of us. Amen. When we have intimacy with Christ, you know, sometimes when we engage in, in you know, in sexual relationships and, and all sorts of, and even let's say pornography, it comes from a lack of intimacy. It comes from a, from a place of trying to fill a certain void. This is why someone can be first act, we you know you can be active in many, many different relationships and many different circumstances, but you'll find that true intimacy comes from God, amen. We must be whole as we are, 
as we are. And, and that wholeness, that completeness, we, we, that is our identity that comes when we are whole, when we're intimate with the Lord. Then in that space, in that space, then we too meet someone else who is also had on the same journey of purity. Then we become the two, then become one. Amen. So intimacy with God. Because when you're intimacy with God, when you're intimate with God, you will be able to be alone and not feel and be lonely. Amen. And that is the key. Let intim intimacy with the Lord. Number one. Number two, when we're talking about how to live lives of purity, the renewing of our minds. Romans 12, 12 to, you know, to not be conformed to the standards of this world, but be transformed but by the renewing of our minds. You know, and let's, you know, I just want to break this down even by gender, you know, starting with men, you know, I was in a place where growing up, I couldn't wait to lose my virginity. I was in a place where I, I was subscribed to such a toxic way of thinking because I thought, hey, you know what, for me to be a man, it means I have to have multiple partners. I have to have multiple this, I have to do this. That's what the world says. But the, 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 God, the Lord says, no, the Lord says, flee from temptation. Be pure. Look what Joseph did. He says, flee. Look, we know from when, when it comes to sexual immorality, the, the word says, flee, run. Don't negotiate. Don't try to talk. Don't resist. Flee, run. The perfect example of this is Joseph. Joseph, he says, when, you know, Potiphar's wife threw himself upon, he didn't try to talk to Potiphar and like, yo, Pot, can we please talk about this? Can we please, can, what, what are you trying to do? Like, this is very unreasonable and uncalled for. He's, the word says he fled, he ran. You know, and that when you run like that, though he no negotiations, absolutely run. And that the Lord says, that's a man. Now the world might say, hey, man, this one's being a coward. How can you be doing that? But then again, we are not conforming. We are not conforming to the worldly standards. No, no, no. We're not conform. We are living the way God has called us to, the way Christ has called us to live. Amen. And I'll say the same for women. Now more than ever, the world is saying. The world is saying, your body, your choice, sexual liberation, do what you want to do. But at the same time, the word of says, the word of God says, don't you know that your life is not your own? Don't you know that you, your, your body, every, everything belongs to Christ? Amen. You belong to God. Therefore, honor God. Therefore, it is so important for us to, to, over, to, to renew, renew our minds and look what the word of the Lord is saying and not go with the program of the world. Amen. And on renewing our minds, I, I believe this another point to add is overcoming peer pressure. Overcoming peer pressure in, in the sense that for, let's say for the gents, again, you, you're in this, you feel you all this pressure to be like, okay, I need to, for me to live a life of purity, then I mean, I, that's not cool, but I should do this. I should do this. I have many partners. That makes me cool. No, no, no. That's not what God sees, you know, but also overcoming peer pressure. And I, I feel this, especially for women, because, you know, the older you get, you turn, you're, you're in your late twenties or you're becoming, you're getting older and you feel ish, you know, what about time for me? And now this pressure, the enemy tries to use this pressure for you to act out of emotion or for you to act hastily and not live a life of purity, you know, thinking, oh, if I hold back from, 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 you know, from, and keep this part of purity, I might lose this partner. So maybe I should give it up so that, you know, this, this person might, we might stick together. Oh, no, 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 no. Let us remain pure in each and every single thing that we do, you know, and just, and just remain pure. Um, so yeah, overcoming purity, um, overcoming peer pressure. So that was point number two, renew your mind. And the last point I would like to share is when it comes to living lives of, of, of purity is having a heart of repentance, a heart of repentance. Amen. And I would like to give the example of David. David, as you know, was someone when God called David, he told Samuel, I have chosen someone, a man, a man after my own heart, you know, and now and now, and what happened with David, those happened with Bathsheba. David was one day on his balcony. He was looking up, excuse me, and he saw Bathsheba bathing. And when he saw Bathsheba bathing, it was like, hey, wow. He had Bathsheba come over. Now Bathsheba was married. Bathsheba came to, to, to his palace. He slept with her and impregnated her. And after that, he then eventually, um, long story short, he got Bathsheba's husband killed. The Lord saw all of this, amen? 
and he was found out. And now what happened was when, 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 they, when, when, when he was confronted, David accepted it. And what he then did immediately was to repent. And Psalms 51 is this, the whole, please read Psalms 51. It's about, it's all about repentance, you know, but there's, there are just two verses I would like to read with, with you. In Psalms 51, uh, first I'll read verse three. You know, this is, this is um, David saying, it was a prayer for forgiveness, a prayer of repentance. He says, I recognize my faults. I am always conscious of my sins. And then I'm going to jump to verse 10 to 13. It says, create, this is as he's repenting. He says, create a pure heart in me, O God, and put a new and loyal spirit in me. Do not banish me from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Give me again the joy that comes from your salvation and make me willing to obey you. And verse 13, it says, then I will teach sinners your commands and they will turn back to you. Amen. And what I, found, what I find so profound about this passage of scripture is that here is David who has sinned. Here's David who has, has gone mm -hmm. through this. But rather than, this is what the enemy does. He wants us to, mm -hmm. the enemy likes to use guilt and self-condemnation for us to turn away from God, for us to like distance away from God, ourselves from God. But David took that very thing and he brought it to the Father and said, this is it. This is what I'm dealing with. But Father, create in me, purify my heart, create in me a pure heart, give me a loyal spirit. But not only that, but verse 13 says, then I will teach sinners your commands and they will turn back to you. Where I stumbled, yours, Lord, I want to use that as a, as a, as a, as a, as a lesson. I want to use my mistake as a lesson. I want to use where I stumbled as a, as, a, as a learning point for someone so that they too don't stumble, so that they too can learn from my mistakes, so that we can all walk in purity. Amen. And I just want to encourage you that if, whatever the case may be, when in your personal, uh, in your personal walk, whether you've, whatever the case where you have maybe done something immoral, could have been watched pornography, could have been in a, in a sexual relationship, whatever the case may be, don't feel like oh, the Lord is so far away. How can I turn back? I mean, how can the Lord accept me? Just know that as the word of God said, I read earlier, um, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, when we are in Christ, everything is a new creation. Amen. The old has passed away. Everything has been made new. And some, someone's, I like a quote that someone said is that we cannot out -sin the cross. And that is not that that is a license for us to, to, to sin, but rather it is a, a word to encourage us and inspires us to that the love of the Father is endless, is unfathomable. So we can take anything and everything and bring it to God. So my prayer tonight for everyone, um, brothers and sisters, is let us aspire to have, to live lives of purity. You know, remembering that first and foremost, it is, it is, purity begins with the heart. It is a matter of the heart. And once you sort out the heart, then everything else will flow. How we conduct ourselves with our friends, how we conduct ourselves with, with our peers, our family, how we deal with certain situations. We will be, when we have, when we, from a perspective of purity, we will see God, amen. And that is my prayer, my prayer for each and every single one of us it's tonight. And even for this week, as, every, as everyone comes and shares, Matthew 5, 18, blessed and the pure in heart, for they will see God. May we have pure hearts so that we see God in each and every area of our lives. We see God in our relationships. We see God in our relationship with him. We see God more, more revelations, more insight. We have a more intimate relationship with him. Amen. Um, and that is the word that I would like to share. Uh, and that is the word that the Lord has placed in my heart. And what... I was assigned to share with you today. May the Lord bless each and every single one of you abundantly. May you experience increase in blessings and peace in abundance. Thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. That was so amazing. Thank you so much, Pastor Tuto. Um, Shoo, um, you know, I love when you said when someone has discernment, they don't only see where God is, but they also see where God isn't. That is so, so amazing. Um, and also just this idea that when we are intimate with the Lord, um, it allows us to be alone with God, 
but still not feel lonely. Thank you so much, sir. Um, so because we are just running over time, I want us to get straight into worship. Just a minute. Okay, so can we, if we can just keep our mics on mute for now. Um, so awesome, I just want us to get straight into worship. I believe um, the rooted host will lead us into worship. And then from there, we can just have a really brief discussion about what we just heard. So um, worship, you may take it away. So we are just inviting you guys to just soak in the presence of the Lord, take this word to him, um, pray over it, meditate over it. Um, yeah. Amen. Amen.
sing his praise alone. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for that. Um, so before we head on to the next um, part of our session, I just want to open up the floor to at least two people who maybe have a word or a comment or even a question um, about this amazing word that we've just received. So if you could just raise your hand, two people maximum, please, and um, I'll give you the floor. Is there anyone that would love to share anything? Okay. It looks like we all Gucci. All righty. Um, okay. So as we are just closing off our session, I am just reminded of how... Sorry, there's a hand, sorry. Yes, oh, so sorry. Amis Mulisa, go ahead. Melissa? Um. Is there a host that has muted Melissa? She's asking to be unmuted. Um, you'll have to unmute from your side, Melissa. Please unmute from yeah. your side. Yeah. So I'm trying to unmute you, Mudisa, but it's just not working. So I don't know if. So she says she's trying to be unmuted, but OK, so it's OK. Maybe if you can share your comment in the chat session, um, that would be much appreciated and we can just read it out. Um, our apologies for that. So as I was saying, Something that just stood out for me as we were praying is that there's absolutely no purity without a relationship with Jesus Christ, right? There's absolutely no purity without intimacy with Jesus Christ. So something that the um, leaders of Rooted felt and was really necessary for this week is for us just to take some time and um, recite the sinner's prayer. And um, I'm yes, Michelle. Sorry uh, for taking too long to raise my hand. I was just busy with my son. Um, I wanted to highlight on the part where Pastor T was speaking about purity being protection. He once mentioned something about, um, especially when it pertains to sexual protection, because we contract, as he would say, sexually transmitted demons. And it's something that we, we, um, we forget sometimes, 
when we partake of such things, then we are leaving ourselves exposed to other things. Not only that, but we allow the seeds of another person or uh, seeds of demons to be part of who we are. And then we find it difficult to uh, break soul ties because we don't understand what we are carrying or what we're fighting with because we made an agreement unknowingly. And this is why it is so important to wait um, for marriage because um, the battle that you encounter or the battle that you, you receive through sexual impurity is one you uh, almost have to fight by yourself because it is an agreement that you came into by yourself without involving God. Another form of protection when he was highlighting that, um, it made me think of Psalm 91 um, when it says, um, um, where is it now? He that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Um, when you are a dweller, so purity is a form of holiness and only holy can reside in a holy place. So when you are a dweller in a holy place, you are always protected from anything and, um, and every attack that may come from the enemy. So you don't continuously have to be running to God because you are living in that space. That means the enemy cannot attack you or come close to you unless, um, uh, unless um, God's hand is open unless you are not under that protection. So for me, that was highlighted. And thank you for that, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Michelle. We really appreciate that. Um, so yes, um, what I was saying, um, brothers and sisters, is just that um, there's absolutely no purity without Jesus Christ. So what the leaders of Rooted felt like, felt was extremely necessary um, for this week was for us to join together and just pray a prayer of salvation. Some of us may call it the sinner's prayer, right? So um, this could be for some of us who might not know Jesus and want to accept him into our hearts and journey or, or begin to journey with him. Or it might be for some of us who just want to rekindle the relationship with the Lord or even just recommit our lives to him, right? Um, so if you don't mind, if we can just recite the um, prayer of salvation. So what I will do, I will pray it and you guys can just repeat it in your own private time. Um, you may keep your mics unmuted. You may unmute your mic or keep it muted. It is all good. Um, so yeah, let's just say the prayer of salvation and just um, welcome the Lord back into our hearts. Amen. So Father God, Thank you for the cross of Calvary. Thank you for the blood that was shed for my sins and for the redemption of my soul. In accordance with your word, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And because I have confessed with my mouth and believe in my heart, by faith, I am forgiven and I am saved. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. So thank you so much for that, guys. Um, so yeah, we have found ourselves at the end of the session. We just want to thank Pastor Tudor for that amazing word. Thank you so much for starting off the week so well, so powerfully, um, and setting up such a lovely foundation for um, the rest of the days. Um, and yeah, I just want to thank the participants for coming through today um, and taking time to just come and fellowship with us. This has been such a blessing. 
please join us tomorrow, you know, same time, same place. We will be hearing from my beautiful friend, Simam Kele Jamjam. Um, and one more thing. So if you want to be in contact with Rooted, right, you can find them basically everywhere. You can find them on Facebook, just Rooted. You can also find them on Instagram. Um, their handle is just underscore rooted right but if you would like more updated or rather if you would like to be updated more regularly um, there's also a whatsapp group so if you are interested in joining this whatsapp group please dm your number to the host right um, dm your number to the host um, and when I mean host, I don't mean me, I mean rooted host, right? Um, but if you DM your number to me, I will definitely send it through to them. Um, so before we log off, Pastor T, may you please um, let us know where we can find you. Um, and once you're done with that, please pray for us and we can go. Thank you very much for that, um, uh, Ruby Seppo. So yes, I am, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, uh, at Tuto Kalitera, one word, T-U-T-O-K-A-L-I-T-E-R-A. -E um, you can find me on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook. Um, yeah, um, hopefully, and pending, YouTube channel pending. Yeah, but that's where you can find me. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it's been an honor just sharing the word and just fellowshipping together. I've been so blessed. Thank you to, thank you to everyone for coming as well. And with that, um, let us just um, close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for just your favor and your goodness, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for tonight where we just came together, Lord, to just fellowship and, and just learn about purity, Lord. Thank you for the word that you have planted in our hearts, Lord. May it, may it be something that just grows and continues, Lord. May we grow in, in our understanding of purity, Lord. But above all else, Lord, may you just shape our hearts for us to just become more pure, Lord. May you purify us and cleanse us in the mighty name of Jesus so that, Father, we can see you, Lord. We can see you in each and every single thing that we do. We pray for an, a more intimate relationship with you, Father. We just thank you and honor you and exalt you in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you might be, you, you, you help us be strong in our in our walks of purity father god may we not compromise in the mighty name of jesus may we not stumble in the mighty name of jesus but help us to keep us upright lord and to walk the straight and narrow path but also father thank you for your love and your grace that even if we do stumble lord that your grace is so abounding and so loving that that we can we that you will still love us regardless lord we pray lord for for just the, that heart that when we stumble we we can always come back to you lord that we the enemy might not use guilt and shame to 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 create distance between us father god but may we just grow in all that we can grow and grow in you in the mighty name of jesus thank you lord for this week may we pray may this be a week of revelation maybe this we be a week where chains are broken may this be a week a week where pe their people experience freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. I also just want to pray for all the sp speakers that are to speak this week, Lord. I pray for Sim, Lord, who uh, Sim who's speaking tomorrow. I pray for gifts, Lord. Thank you. May you bless her, Lord. For Kelet, who speaks on Thursday, and lastly, for Michelle, who speaks on Friday. May you bless all the speakers in the mighty name of Jesus. May they not speak on their own accord. May they not speak the, from the wisdom from their own minds, Lord. But Father, may they speak a word that is coming directly from you, Lord. And we also want to pray for each and all the participants, Father. May you, may you prepare our hearts to be ready for, for the word that is to be shared, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you are, Lord. We honor you. We praise you and we thank you. Receive all the glory now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, Lord. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Alrighty. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow where Simam Kele will be giving us some bars, spitting some bars. <laughs> <laughs> amen.